Well, thank you very, thank you for the nice introduction, and uh, thank you all for being here today. First of all, I would like to say that all the activities of my research project were supported by funds by the European Commission under the Rescue ETM project, and under the supervision of the Professor Matteo Sonsalerda. The roadmap for today will be composed of an introduction, the description of the GPUs that are main target of the research in terms of the safety critical domain, two proposed solutions in terms of the functional testing based on the in-field approach and in a software-based solution in order to identify those faults, and later on one solution that was based on developing flexible solutions targeting the in-field detection and also the in-field mitigation of faults for uh, GPUs, and finally some basic impressions. Well, first of all, nowadays uh, the new trends or new technology and the new applications basically change the way that we interact with our environment. And actually most of them requires new applications and new technologies. In that case, as you can observe here on the right, you will see that most of them requires the, basically the, co and the convergency of several technologies. And most of them basically requires actually the use of se uh, several disciplines and most of them will be basically focused on the use of new kind of transistor of devices. If we check and have a look on the state of the art on the reliability operations on most of the transistor-based technologies, you will realize that the technology scaling approach that is basically uh, has been basically boost the developments during the last 20 years has reached a point where the operative life has a let's say basically a start to a stop. So what can we observe here? On the left, we will realize that most of the applications and most of the transistors in other ways will start to reduce the operative life, so more faults will start to appear. Later on on the right, you will realize that new applications that basically are forced or are basically composed of several systems or several devices will start to compose also memories inside. And actually what happened is that you will see that more chips also includes more potential errors per month. In the end, we will realize, oh sorry, that the traditional end of testing solutions are not affordable anymore and finally there is also a need of potential new fault tolerance solution for this kind of devices or for this kind of technology. Applying to the GPU domain that is basically my target of research, we will realize that first of all it's important for safety critical applications and well uh, let's say a formal definition of a safety critical application will be based in those kind of special applications where a particular failure can compromise the complete execution and actually can produce severe consequences in terms of lives for nowadays they are also considering that extensive environmental damages could be also included. That particular kind of applications in theory are fully complex to develop, they require some constraints in terms of performance, most of them require nowadays the use of a portable production cost, power budget, and much more important, that is basically the main target, they should have reliability for long-term operation. In terms of GPUs, the big deal is that some of them will be used basically for computer vision, sensor fusion, and basically to implement deep neural networks, where the high demanding of uh, amount of data to be processed is so huge, as you can observe here in the two examples. The big deal is that we know that GPUs came from a different kind of market, not fully devoted to, to target kind of safety critical applications. So you will realize that there are several reliability issues in GPUs and actually there is a limited by a number of solutions targeting the developing of testing and mitigation solutions for GPUs. Now I will propose or I will basically share one of the first strategies that will be based on the developing of software-based self-test solutions. Actually this kind of approaches is fully effective for functional testing for uh, processor-based systems and were used in the past and nowadays for, pro for most of processors, let's say, base component. Later on, you will realize that actually the main advantages of this kind of uh, solutions are the at speed testing, it means that I will be using the frequency of my real device during the operation to perform the testing. Uh, there is no full intrusiveness because I don't need to add any kind of hardware, I will be just developing programs or test programs and finally it's fully flexible, because if I change my target to, or, or I uh, change my program, basically it will be to provide flexibility depending on the target model or depending on the target GPU. Of course, I have some constraints. I require to take into account what is the potential overhead in terms of resources or in terms of performance. It means the test duration. 
In simple words, once you identify that you target one particular module inside a device, in this case a GPU, you will be able to provide or translate the particular, uh, let's say, conditions into a set of a sequence of algorithms that could be deterministic or could be pseudo-randomic in order to basically identify how to excite and how to basically propagate any potential fault effect. In the end, you will basically translate or map this kind of algorithms into the selected number of instructions that will allow you to basically identify it in an observable point if there was a fault inside your device. The very interesting point for the GPU technology is that when you apply this kind of solutions, you also have to face several layers of, uh, let's say, pro uh, the programming stack in the GPU. So you have to deal with what happened with the compilers and what happened, for instance, when you are applying a really high level. The first target for my, uh, let's say, uh, so uh, solutions was basically targeting the warp scheduler. And for those who doesn't have, let's say, fully deep knowledge in GPUs, is basically the first manager and monitor that you will find inside the GPU. So if one particular fault affects my scheduling controller or my wireless scheduler, most probably all the cores and all the system and all the team basically will fail. For that target, I proposed one solution that was based on the developing of, uh, let's say, some um, adoptions that will be based on first in identifying my target module and also the operational constraints. Later on, uh, I have to basically identify which are the fault primitives or high level, even before the definition of the technology, and how can I combine them? Uh, how can I combine them? Fault primitives with the operational constraints. Later on, I will try to generate what could be the potential test patterns and the sequence of operations at high level that it would require to be the, to be performed. In the end, I will translate them into the equivalent high-level functions using one of the programming language for the real GPUs of NVIDIA technology that would be based on CUDA, let's say, programming language. Finally, I will integrate all those functions and I will build parallel programs that are basically my test program kernel and I will validate inside my GPU or targeting my particular core. Some of the results I obtained using a real GPU with combining of some architectural memory simulator allow us to observe that I was able to basically identify all the potential targets and also in terms of the power primitives. In this case, I will be, it was basically using a single and, do, and double coupling fault effect inside the memory of my scheduler. Other techniques for other modules inside the GPU would require, of course, the adoption of different technologies or different methods, such as the case of those modules that are basically configurable during the operation of one particular parallel program. It means that I will not be able to test the, in the internal component if I am not able to change the configuration of any single one of my test programs. In the end, I prove my solution that is basically well known for the CPUs that I adapted for GPUs, basically targeting the pipeline registers inside the GPU model. In the end, I obtained the 80%, but the really interesting part here was that I was able to prove also that the high-level programming language can be used only to develop this kind of complex programs. So I deal or I face issues regarding the compilation steps. steps sorry. There is another techniques that are basically targeting, for instance, fully regular structures inside the GPU, such as the execution cores, which in this case, uh, the one of the feasible solutions will be based on trying to adopt all kinds of solutions using in the processor-based systems, such as ATPG-based methods, such as automatic test pattern generators, algorithms, or also set the random approaches. In the end, the really interesting part is that applying all of them and setting the conditions of how can you apply them or learn the test or search the test patterns, I was able to obtain a really decent full coverage for this kind of units. Oh, well, finally, um, um, I was uh, I did uh, let's say with this and other techniques that with a lack of time I cannot introduce to you. Uh, I checked the condition for a complete GPU. In such a case, I was able to take them basically playing with all the potential conditions and all the potential uh, methods or strategies to develop test programs. Is it possible to reach a 92% in the internal core of a GPU? It means that this kind of solution based on software based on tests could be a feasible solution for GPUs. Later on, I performed a reliability evaluation and also an evaluation in terms of functional safety. 
that basically provide us an ACLB, ACLB rate for these kind of applications. Later on I will talk about the flexible library mechanism and in this case, first of all, I will, let's say, introduce or will be fully sure of what is the hybrid structure concept. So what is the purpose of the hybrid hybrid structures? First of all, you will have basically the optimized solution in terms of software or also hardware. For my target, is basically to be able to detect, detect or also mitigate faults. For instance, in case of software, you will, uh, let's say, obtain the flexibility because you will be able to control the operation of your structure but you will also regain the low cost in terms of performance by the hardware structures. For such a purpose I propose three different methods. The first one will be based on the duplication with comparison but the dynamized that I call just DDWC. In this case I will be basically targeting the most regular structures inside the GPU which are those functional units. And it's composed and it's based on basically the selection of the correct spiral redundancy. So it will be basically targeting those, those modules that are fully organized in parallel and can I basically add a redundant module to perform the comparison. This structure is basically what you observe in dark blue. Later on, there is another solution that is basically to perform the mitigation. And in that case, it will be composed and avoid in self repair strategy. And in that case, as you can observe in dark blue, in this case, I will not target the comparison or, or the detection. I will be targeting the replacement or faulty units. So there will be some code spare cores inside my device, and in particular, in parallel with my functional units, in such a case that if one of them is faulty, I will be able to basically replace and continue or increase the reliability execution and the life of my device. In the end, I combine both of them in one strategy called DIAM. So in such a purpose, I will be obtaining the capabilities of detection and also the capabilities of mitigation of faults for the particular structures inside my GPU. And I will, of course, we have three operative modes, detection, mitigation, and both at the same time. As you can observe here, in dark blue, I will basically have a huge structure in parallel with my, uh, let's say, regular structures, and I will be able to perform the detection or also the mitigation to maintain field operation. So I will be running instructions, and I will be basically able to identify what happened and how can I correct these kind of behaviors. In the end, the final evaluation that I performed to this kind of a structure was the power consumption evaluation area and performance. In terms of power, it was possible to analyze that the consumption, if I would like to add up to 50% of additional spare cores, will require, for instance, a 23.7%. Of course, we are considering that we don't know how many spare cores I would like to add. In terms of area for the different, let's say, configurations of the parallel cores, it was possible to identify that less than 2 or even 1% can be the potential area cost. And finally, in terms of uh, performance degradation, the solution doesn't cost uh, less than 1%. Okay, sorry here. Finally, for the reliability evaluation, that is one of the, let's say, targets of these kind of structures, it was interesting to observe that this kind of, uh, let's say, structures follows, or my structure follows basically a cumulative distribution. So in such a case, I was able to basically describe mathematically that my architecture will be able to provide an increasement in terms of reliability. So in such a case, as you can observe in the graph on the left, I can basically play with the potential number of M, that is basically the total of additional mm, mm, cores, the spare cores that it would like to add. In the end, for instance, observing those metrics, observing those waveforms, I can say that M equal to 2 will be enough and will provide the best increment in terms of reliability. On the right, for instance, I was, I was just basically replacing the potential effect in terms of reliability versus time. And I can also observe what would happen if I would not have this kind of a structure inside my GPU device. So the, the line in blue, or the waveform in blue, basically represents the probability, or the, sorry, the reliability in operation when there is not a structure. And in green, when there is only the, the mitigation solution activated. The red one is when I have both activated the reliability, sorry, the mitigation and the detection phases, or the detection modes of operation. And finally, as basic conclusions, 
I can say that first, after this work, I can say that the functional test strategies based on software-based solutions are feasible for GPUs but should face two main constraints. The first one, there are several programming layers or abstractions in terms of GPUs, so you need to manage all of them. The second one is that there is supposed to be the microarchitectural details really clear on these kind of devices that in most of the cases it was simple to realize. Later on, I can say that the SBST solution could be a feasible strategy for functional testing and also for, as a safety mechanism or as an alternative for safety mechanism when applied, for instance, to safety critical applications. Finally, I can claim, for instance, that the hybrid structures in terms of performance and also in terms of hardware costs could be considered as a potential alternative for this kind of devices. And thank you.